You just built your first dissolution tank for your Monazai Basicite line. But how does it work? The tooltip on this multi-block says you must input the fluids at the correct ratio, which ends up being quite a puzzle. And so it kind of brings about the question, uh, how do we automate this? Well, here to show you that today. Hello everyone, my name is Vin Drake from the Cat's Cozy Games channel, and we're going to show you how to automate the dissolution tank. And so the design I'm going to be showing you here is from Cobra5, who is on the GTNH official Discord. Uh, he's the one who came up with this design. It basically uses a separate ME network or subnet and uses the ME level maintainer. Um, yeah, big shout out to Cobra5. I'll provide a link in the description if you want to go look at the written guide. But if you're looking for something a little bit more visual, um, that's what this video is for. So we already did it for the monazite line, um, but we also need to do it for the basicite mud as well, the diluted basicite mud. And so the way you get that is saltpeter, and then you need the conditioned basicite mud, which is a little bit of a line, it's just a couple processes. Um, it doesn't take too long to get to this point. And then you need water, and you need it at this exact ratio. And so the question is, well, how are we gonna get that? I'm gonna show you. So, first things first, we need two input hatches. So basically we're gonna replicate this, but we're gonna turn it 180 degrees. And the reason for that is because we're wall sharing. So we're gonna be employing the use of the stocking input bus and output bus that's wall shared here. And just so happens that saltpeter is used for the other recipe as well. So have a nice little happy coincidence. So we're gonna tear out these two casing here. And we're gonna put two input hatches. Uh, the fact that these are EV is very important. Um, well, a little bit less important for this because the amounts that you need are only 1,000 and 10,000. So it's not as big of a deal. Uh, for the other one, the uh, monazite, you needed 9,000 and 90,000. So it was a little bit more important to have bigger input hatches. I still like having this anyway, just as, well, you probably don't need it, but regardless. Uh, let's see. We're gonna put those there, and then we're gonna put uh, an ME um, dual interface. I actually don't have one in my inventory right now. Let's go grab one. And you need this to be full block size because the full block of this needs to be able to access both of these input hatches simultaneously. So we're gonna put that right there. And then we're going to put the ME level maintainer. This is kind of the thing that does the magic. So if you look over here, it basically looks at how much of a fluid you have in the subnet and tells the system, hey, hey you know, there's no fluid. Uh, we need to make some more. And so then it activates a recipe. Um, we'll get to that recipe in just a minute. So we're going to pop that there. We will um, mess with the config of this in just a little bit. Uh, you're also just kind of kind of need an ME controller for good measure. It just kind of helps connect things, make sure we have enough channels, etc. Um, also going to have a fluid discretizer right here. Uh, let's see. Just making sure I'm doing this right. Yeah. Could be good. All right. So another thing that we need to have here is um, output hatch. So this is how the fluid is going to get out of the system. That right there. And then we're going to need a reservoir hatch. This is how we're going to get water. For the recipe. Because again, you just need the conditioned basicite mud and the water. And let's see. We can go ahead and start kind of connecting all this stuff up. So, uh, fluid discretizer will get access via the ME controller. So. All right. And now one thing we are going to need is a storage bus. And that's so the blue network, the little subnet, 
for our system uh, can see water. And we're just going to set that at negative 10,000. Make sure it doesn't collect water from like the main net for some reason. Uh, make sure it always gets it from here. Uh, the lower the priority, the sort of higher in priority it's going to be in ex being extracted. Kind of how priorities work in applied energistics. Uh, let's see. I'm also going to have a super tank. Uh, let's see. Now, actually, I think I need this cable anchor. I'm going to put that right over here instead. Or actually, no. Right here. Because we're going to do our crafting unit and crafting storage. So this is what you need in order for the system to be able to craft anything at all. You know, your your basic applied energistic system always needs crafting CPU, essentially. Uh, so we're also going to need to give power to this. Um, yeah, we can do that right here. That should be fine. Uh, we're going to put a, an orange cable right here. Orange is sort of our main net. It's actually technically a subnet of our main net, but it's like, essentially think of this as your main net. Your like sort of master network and then your slave network right here. All right. And then we're going to take a fluid storage bus and a dual interface. And we're going to do a dual interface on our main network, the orange network, like so. Then we're going to do a storage, a fluid storage bus, like so. And then we're going to do extract only. And so this is a way for the blue network, our subnet, to be able to see fluids on the orange network. And so that's how we're going to get the um, the conditioned basicite mud, which is somewhere else on the orange network. This is how we're going to get it um, into the blue network. So the blue network can see it through the storage bus uh, dual interface combo. Uh, make sure you set extract only. And then... Finally, we're going to need a place for our fluid to finally go. And that's going to be the, yeah, right here. I just realized I'm going to need a, another fluid storage bus. We're going to put one right here. This is going to be insert only. And I don't think you really need to whitelist this because there's only going to be one fluid ever being output from recipes and that's the final product you can do that and then finally we're going to do a fluid storage bus connected to orange network again this is sort of like your final destination for the fluid is the super tank and so we need the orange network to be able to see this for our best side line and then we're going to do extract only on that all right so that should be everything that's almost everything so one of the things we need to do is we need to be able to put a little droplet here in the fluid maintainer. So because we have a disc fluid discretizer, it's going to move fluids around via the discretizing of them. So it turns them into little droplets tempor temporarily. And that's how the fluid, uh, the level maintainer detects things. So if I look over here at this level maintainer, I've got diluted monazite rare earth mud. And I have one here. So anything that's like, so if there's none of this in the system, then it will do the recipe and start to make more. But you don't have access to this droplet. And I don't know of any way to get it in any eye, uh, make it appear so that you can kind of like, you know, ghost it in, drag it in. So what we actually need to do is we need to um, do one round of this stuff. We actually need to like make some initial amount of this fluid so that we then have access to the droplet. So, come over here to our reservoir hatch. We'll get uh, 10 water, just double checking here. 10 water, one conditioned basicide mud. And I believe that is over here at the moment, sitting in our mixer. Sort of the previous step. And we'll come up here. Uh, there's one input hatch. We'll put water in that. And then we need access to the other one. We'll put our conditioned basicide mud in this one. Then, 
Now we should be good to go. I think everything should be fine. We're getting saltpeter from a stocking input bus uh, that's wall shared. So if we hit power switch, boom, there we go. Very nice. We're running at EV, right? Yeah, EV. So 50 seconds on this. Not too bad. Uh, while we are waiting on that, uh, there is one other part of this equation that we need, and that is the recipe. So uh, over here on Monocyte, I have a recipe here. So this is a recipe where you have the exact amounts of the solution. So that's how we know how much to put into the input hatches. And so what you're going to do is make this recipe, although a little bit easier said than done. So if I try to come over here to, uh, where would it be? Just like your normal fluid pattern terminal that you have at this stage. Um, and I could even go over here. Yeah, I end up using this one a whole lot. So yeah, basic three by three fluid pattern terminal. And if you, I don't think this will actually be a problem with the diluted bacillite mod, but let me show you an example. So there was a problem with the monazite one. If you're working on the monazite part of the line, there's a lot of outputs here. So, and we do want circuit nine because you want these full dusts, right? So if I try to put this in the system, Watch, it's gonna put everything here, but it's got four outputs. Uh oh. Well, we don't actually have <laughs> enough room for the liquid. So there is no liquid. And that's the only thing we really care about showing here. Uh, so, okay, I could come over here to my pins and I could try to drag it in. Okay, let's do that. Well, unfortunately, this does not work because if you look at the type of um, tooltip that you get for these, and then you look at this one, it's completely different. This recipe will not work in the system. It will not recognize it via the fluid discretizer, unfortunately. So what you need to do is, well, you need more output spaces. But that's like the, what, what is that um, crazy fluid pattern terminal that you can get? It's in uh, Applied Energistics chapter. I think it's this one up here. Yeah, so this is mainly for the, like, doing stuff for the assembly line later on. But this has more output hatches, so we could make this. Oh, uh-oh, LUV components. Uh, we can't make that. We're in IV right now, trying to do the monazite basicide line. So what do we do? Well, you can actually make the universal wireless terminal, this thing, which is a really good quality of life boost anyway. I think you can make this as early as EV. I know you can make it in IV, at least. Um, yeah, this is really good. So, I have a keybind for that G, and if you look at all the options, there's a processing pattern terminal, and look at that. We actually have early access to that uh, terminal that normally requires the LUV components. So, we can actually come over here to the monazite, and boom, put that in, get rid of all the other dust stuff, because this is the only actual part we care about, and boom, there you go. You can tell that you've done the right thing because you'll have it in the droplet form like this, the 99,000, etc. But this isn't actually the one we need because uh, we're doing the basicite line this particular time. So if I go to this one. This one is much easier. You don't actually need access to this terminal for this particular recipe. We can do that. And then there we go. There's our recipe. You can see it's in the droplet form. So that's exactly how we want it. And we can come back over here. And our fluid should be done. Yep, there's our 11,000 diluted basicite mud. Now we need access to one droplet of this. So what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna borrow this discretizer over here. I'm gonna come over to our main orange terminal and add it to that. And that way we can actually see things. And there we go, diluted basicite mud. So we can just take a little bit of that temporarily. We can add it to NEI finally. And we can actually drag this one in now. So it's not a problem. So we can actually put this back. No problem. Because we have it pinned now. So there we go, 11,000. We can take our fluid discretizer. We can put it back where we found it. Okay, perfect. And so this recipe, the final little bit here. Well, okay, before I do that, the droplet. We wanted the droplet because we want to put it in the ME level maintainer. And actually, let me... I don't want this going off before I'm ready, so turn that off. You're going to come over here to your fluid level maintainer, and you're going to drag that in, and then you're going to check mark that, make sure it's enabled. 
and so it says errored. So the reason for the error is because there's no recipe for it right now. It says the requester is trying to schedule a crafting job but is failing. Missing recipe. Aha. Uh -huh. That's what this thing is for. This is a recipe we just encoded. So we're going to put that in the dual interface, like so. There's our 11,000. And then suddenly, boom, our system knows how to do it. Um, now, right now, it's not going to because it, as long as there's some fluid in here, it actually will not run. So what we want to do, we can turn this back on. Find a little bit of the puzzle uh, just to demonstrate that this does work. We're going to take all this fluid out here. And then this should turn yellow because it will recognize that there is no, yep, there we go, crafting. Because it realizes that there's none in there. There's less than one uh, liter. So it's like, oh, okay, hey, we need some more. There we go adds the exact right amount you need. And whenever that buffer empties out into the next step of your Bastionite line or your Monazite line, boom, this thing will run again. Works like a charm. This thing has never failed on me. This thing is fantastic. I really hope this tutorial helped you out. If so, give it a thumbs up, uh, click subscribe on our channel and come visit us uh, Monday through Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern on twitch.tv slash cats cozy games. Until next time, stay safe.